So today we are playing with something a little bit different than we're used to uh, over the last couple of years because uh, this has been kind of outlawed in a bunch of states, uh, such as where we're from, uh, Michigan. So whatever your beliefs are, try to uh, keep them sheltered or, or uh, controlled, I guess I should say, on this video. But I'm going to explain to you why we're doing this. One, it's because it's legal. Two, it's ethical. And three, it's what we choose to do here on the farm. Um, and so there's other things that come with that. But what we're doing today is we're setting this out uh, feeder. I've actually purchased this from a uh, neighbor. It was actually a water, a water tank. And they actually have it up on um, uh, some some stilts. It's kind of neat. And they used it as a water storage when they were remodeling their home. And it was right around the corner from the house. What I've done is I've put the Moultrie uh, directional feeders on the bottom of them, on the bottom of this one. And we're going to give this a whirl to see um, what happens. Now, you know, right off the bat, it says that it'll throw, you know, feed 30 feet. It does not do that. But uh, it's, it's uh, kind of serves its purpose for what we're doing and the reason for that is is we're putting this out on the where the um, ag and the food plots are going to be so in other words it's a supplemental feed it's not strictly our our all our whole strategy is just put corn out um, obviously we're doing uh we're doing the plots and in, in the uh you know the, the standing ag and and everything like that that comes with it but I'm a, I'm a firm believer in any time that you can add the beneficial nutrients that, um, you know, that you, you can get by doing this correctly, um, we, we're, we are all about it. So where does this come into the plan? How do we go about doing this uh, on a huntability side of it and also nutrition? So here at the, the farm right now, we have no summer food. There's uh, nothing here for summer food other than that you know is planted by us other than forbs and forages that are growing in the set aside hay, hay field and actually this this farm has a lot of uh clover uh, that has been planted and kind of where they used to have egg and that wild clover is actually uh looks very very good um you know i've planted the buckwheat and the sorghum in and we've crimped all that down um, and we're waiting for that that sorghum to or crimp the, the uh, native uh you know the hay field down over top of it like we spoke in the past videos and we're waiting for now we we are in that uh, you know waiting time for, for that buckwheat and that sorghum to to grow so we can get uh you know have that standing crop to roll the brassicas into in in the, in the fall or over the top of the brassicas in the fall so where does the feed come into this the feed the supplemental feed comes into it as just a way to back up and support feed requirements as far as tonnage um, to me, it has nothing to do with putting deer in front of tree stands. Obviously, you can see where this is at. There's no stands. There will not be any stands, um, tree, or uh, bow stands over this. Now, there is going to be right down here, back towards, you can actually see that the house in the distance there. Our screening is going to be up over the top, and that octagon blind is going to be right down there on the edge. Uh, it's 150, 125, 150 yards to this. So, will we will we be able to shoot this? Yes, we will, with a gun only, not a bow. And why is that so important? What I find that happens a lot is, is the folks go the extra mile to put all the effort in with the food plots, and then they end up putting a feeder, maybe not of this size, but a feeder in front of the tree stands. And at that point, you might just as well be sitting on the food plot. So what we do here is I'm, I'm putting this out here in the field, but it's related to, so this whole wall up through here it was, uh, is old, uh, berm from the field and the only opening that's going to be in here is there's a two track there that we what we talked we're going to shut that off that's just about 50 60 yards in front of the stand is, is because i want that down we're going to mulch that trail out into the right in front of the octagon it's going to come down it's just inside the woods here about 40 yards before it, so we can hunt you know up from from the bottom up into it and it comes out it's going to hit that we're going to mulch it out in right in front of the octagon and that goes into the band that we talked about, that 30 yard band over the top for transferring deer from one side to the next. And this is set up here in the field. So in other words, during the gun season, we will be able to see this. Uh, we'll be able to fill it. Um, you know, we won't have to fill it because I, I uh, the way I do my math, it's probably gonna hold about 800 pounds of corn. 
at uh, at about two and a half pounds a day on the ground uh, we've got it set to noon so that noise doesn't affect anything in the mornings the noise doesn't affect anything at night it's just here it's a quiet food source it goes off at noon um, and and we've got the feed out in front of it so we can sit there and see that like I was saying from the octagon but it's a strategy that we can get down out of that during the gun season we'll be able to open the door it's going to be hidden just inside just tucked behind a couple cedars and we're going to be have Egyptian wheat the incognito screening there from domain out in front of it and take two or three steps out the back door and we're gone and uh, the way the elevation is here is if you could see this I uh, hope maybe you can see this in the uh, right there is about where the octagon is going to be and you can see that there's just a slight rise so that the, just the top of that octagon is going to be sticking out so just a couple of steps out the back door and we're already we're already um, over the top and we're gone and we can get away from it so uh, I got the bees attacking me here does it re does it relate to uh, does it relate to movement uh, yes it does absolutely it relates to that that uh, inlet on that band and it also relates to a bunch of dough bedding here it's no different than having the food plot or the egg up here with dough bedding just behind it which is uh, right behind me here and we're gonna have our our dough bedding corridors poked into this with uh, put make this correct over time here we're gonna make this dough bedding uh, correct with uh, side cover and thermal so there's no uh, no different than having a food plot out here, and I'm not trying to make excuses for this, guys, because I already know that comment is coming. Uh, I'm trying to, to, you know, let you know the strategy. So, we've baited before. This is not so much of a, a, a baiting situation as it's part of our feed, feed program. You know, if that ever changes here in Kentucky, then obviously we won't do it. Um, so, but corn is pretty strong as far as protein and value. And uh, you know, this year, like I said, you know, maybe maybe next year when we have standing corn, we'll we'll look at it. Maybe I won't need it. Uh, but it's supplemental feed. We're gonna have I think three of these are around the farm, all strategically placed to help you know promote deer in and out of food sources, or help um, the huntability of that, but not be on them. Like we said, there's no tree stands gonna be hung here behind it or nothing like that. Uh, so it's, it doesn't matter if we're going to try to hunt it, you know, a.m. or p.m. because we're not, it doesn't matter. It goes off at noon, and it's just to enhance, to back up if you are. It's no different than planting rye. It's no different than planting, um, you know, a backup fail-proof strategy when your uh, food plot fails, right? It's just there to enhance it. So what we're going to do in front of the cameras, you can see this is actually has post on it, and I'm hoping to get... I'm hoping to get some more of these for that reason. It's got like a little flat bar right there on the uh, this perfect spot to mount the camera. So we're trying to get the sun directional right here and stuff. Uh, trying to get them to the north so we don't have that you know glare setting the camera off all the time. But what we're going to do, as I'll show you here, we are actually going to dispense the corn out in front of it. And uh, I'll show you a little, um, and, and uh, kind of you know bring the deer out in front of it. And I'll show you what we're going to use this year uh, coming up. I've been looking into this because, you know, over the years in Michigan, we haven't been able to use it. So I kind of took myself out of that equation. Well, what we're going to be using is uh, this year here, it's, this is made in Kentucky. And I, you can see it's the uh, Buck Bourbon is what it's called. Now they make a two or three different, um, you know, they make a mineral. They make the, uh, you know, the 110 proof here that we're going to use, which is uh, an attractant. And we're going to use that here in front of the cameras and at our mineral stations which are you know our, our summer inventory right here and then you know none of that will get transferred down in front of tree stands we're just going to leave it at our our feed stations and our mineral stations and uh, to, to you know attract deer to the uh, you know to the property itself uh, and to get some right now get some you know quality summer photos so that's kind of the the uh, uh, we're, 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 I seen this it's actually made uh, right in Lawrenceburg uh, Kentucky and uh, you know it's it's uh, I haven't cracked the bag yet but it's got uh, some great aroma is what I've heard and uh, you know everybody uh, speaks very highly of it so we are going to get this uh, set out on the ground and you know keep in mind the the moral of this here is to kind of bring you up to speed on where we're at here what we're doing here on the farm today and also um, you know just a reminder if you're going to do this with these feeders which if you're in a state that allows it 
I highly recommend using it. But what I don't recommend using it is don't get caught in the trap of sending these, um, you know, putting these uh, feeders, do it going through, putting the work into your food plots, making sure these food plots, um, you know, move deer the way you want them to, and then go in and take a feeder uh, of this style or a hanging feeder or whatever the situation is and put it in front of your tree stand. Like I said, at that point, you might just as well be sitting on the... Um, on the uh, food plot because you're not going to get away from it and that's not the, that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to use this as an enhancement uh, a backup for our food plot um, you know program our feed program that we're doing here mineral and uh, so you know what other ones could you use obviously we, you know we're looking at right now we're looking at some of the capsule 55 gallon uh, barrel feeders which I think are pretty neat they feed out the top so you don't have the you know this here worry about coming out the, the bottom and and uh, uh, so there's different ways to use it different feeders you can hang them you can do whatever now out here we're electing to do this because you know if I can fit what I think is going to be 800 pounds of corn in here and keep it good and dry and dispense about two and a half gallons of uh, feed uh, or two and a half pounds of feed a day you know I put 50 pounds in here for example today I set that Moultrie feeder and it says I've got uh, 13 days of feed at like two and a half pounds so, I mean, it, it's, uh, it, it'll last quite a while, and that's our goal is to put that much in there so we're not out here in the food you know, plots. That's why I'm testing it now. We're not out here in the food plots goofing around during the fall. Uh, they're loaded with corn, and, uh, you know, maybe we can get that. i got to do the math yet on it, but maybe we can get those, you know, a couple months of uh, time feeding out of there, and hopefully the batteries last and, and uh, we're good to go. And it's just an enhancer, so you do not have to be crawling around out here disturbing anything. And it just backs up those uh, potential failed food plots up front, or, or, uh, you know, the the uh, deer destroy in a in an area such as we are with good deer numbers. Uh, you know, they destroy your plot, and then what do you have left come fall? So, just a couple of tips, guys. Kind of like I said, bring you up to speed on what we're doing. We're looking uh, pretty uh, excited, you know, to see. We're gonna put this out now. We've got good movement in front of the cameras, and we're gonna put the old buck bourbon to them and uh, and see what happens. So, stay tuned.